Warhammer is an elite tier hobby, and I'm very grateful to have it in my life. For me, it's unrivaled as a way to spend my free time. And I want to tell a story about how I got into it, why I do it, and why I think it's so good. When I was a young boy, I think maybe six or seven years old, Lord of the Rings films had just come out and I loved it. I was so into it. And we used to have this news agents that we went to visit and I'd always check the magazine racks, uh, you know, because back in the day, people weren't really on the internet in the early 2000s. So you actually got information from comics and magazines as a child. I used to get comic books all the time and um, I used to get Lego comics and you know, cartoons and stuff, uh, you know, just kid, kids comics. But uh, one, one day we noticed um, these on the shelf and I think I was a few months late you know, I think it was like issue six or something. But the news agents had, had quite a few of these that hadn't sold. And I think I remember just buying a bunch of them. Um, and then every week after that, I, th I think they were weekly, we'd go and pick them up. You know, from the, from the news agents, I think the guy would even maybe keep, keep them behind the counter for me um, with my dad. And these were great. I mean, look, four, three ninety nine, four quid for uh, a unit or a character model. Um, from the films and this was great and this is how I sort of got into it basically I, I would paint these um, collect an army and of course this escalates very fast uh, I think I got into Warhammer Fantasy not long after and I, I used to go down to the Games Workshop store I used to I think I collected Orcs and Goblins and used to play and paint with my friend and this isn't me by the way uh, and I think I think from, from there we, we got into 40k as well and this was probably over the next five years of my life, I, I think I, I was doing this all the time, I, you know, on and off, but but mo mostly, I mean, I still have most of the models that I painted and collected b back then, and I, I have a lot of them, <laughs> did it for years. I think the first 40k model I bought, and I remember buying it from, I think, Tesco's, they, they used to sell Warhammer all over the place um, back in the day, and then they sort of limited it to, to only Games Workshop stores and then a, lo a local sort of gaming stores. But they used to sell these in supermarkets, I think. And I remember buying a Chaos Biker, which is kind of interesting because they actually still sell the same model. It's one of the oldest models Games Workshop make um, that's still produced. I think we should see an update for these soon. But I, I have this model. It was my first ever model. And I, from there, I collected a Chaos Space Marine Army. And I actually have a soft spot for these old Chaos models. I think the, the general Space Marine firstborn models, I, I'm not... Too, too hot on because you know the legs are kind of short they look a bit silly but i have a real soft spot for these old chaos marines um the new chaos marines don't quite cut it for me in the same way that the new space marines i think are very good but now i collect a blood angels army um I, I love the new range there's so much to delve into i mean it's it's games workshop have always had a large range for 40k and for fantasy but at the moment it's it's just it's just huge and even up to 10th edition now, I'm collecting these models avidly, and and I love it. So I've, it's, it's it's something that's really stuck with me in my life, and I haven't, you know, I've, I've sort of come in and out and had other things going on, um, but I'd say fairly consistently, it's always sort of come back to me, and I've always been interested in painting and, and playing and reading about these um, things, even if I'm not, you know, that actively collecting or sort of planning. Um. And I want to talk about where Warhammer sits in terms of other hobbies. Um, these are the most popular hobbies or how people spend their leisure time in the UK last year or something. And uh, the ones with the green arrows, I think, all relate to Warhammer in some, some respect. So reading, uh, traveling, if you, if you go to tournaments, socializing is a very social hobby. Um, there's Warhammer-related gaming. And then obviously DIY and arts and crafts is probably what you'd actually put, put this in mostly. And also board games, right, if you're playing or painting. Uh, but it's also, you know, photography, I'd say even meditation is relevant because it's a very therapeutic thing to do and maybe writing if you're into fan fiction. So I'd say ha half of all hobbies, you know, activities are sort of captured by the the universe of Warhammer, whether it's painting, playing, law, uh, etc. Which, For me, I found that I have a very addictive personality. So when it comes to drinking, I, I drink a lot. Or uh, I'm not a gambler, but you know, this is these are sort of things people can get get caught in with addictive personalities. And actually, for me as well, video video games have been a real 
thing I've played video games on and off throughout my life and there have been points where I've been I'd say fairly addicted to certain video games um and also pe people spend a lot of time just watching Netflix series um you know most people I think normal people spend a lot of time just watching binge watching tv almost and this kind of relates to the like dopamine world of constant uh, media engagement uh, social media is very bad and you can spend hours of your life doom scrolling well why am I saying all this well I found that Warhammer for me has been probably the healthiest addiction that I've ever had I, I think I feel like it, in a way it's healthy to have something you're kind of obsessed by as long as it doesn't affect your life too negatively and I think Warhammer really fills that void for me and it's, it's not a void it just fills that part of my life and, and why, why it's so healthy is that the act of actually doing it, I think it's just good for your brain, painting, playing. It's very creative. It's very engaging. It's very stimulating. But there's no real downside beyond maybe the cost. I mean, it can be expensive, but, you know, have you seen the price of a pint of beer? You know, everything's expensive. Um, and you actually get a tangible output, which is why I kind of prefer it to gaming, because gaming, you can sink hundreds and thousands of hours into video games, and, you know, it's pixels. <laughs> it's, it's pixels on the screen. Whereas with Warhammer, you actually have something there, you know, something real, something tangible, something you can share, something other people can appreciate. Art, in a way, a collection that's yours. Um, a, a, a similar hobby that I also think is fairly healthy is Lego, but the difference between Lego and Warhammer for me, um, both are very expensive, is that I tend to build a Lego set once. And yes, you can take it apart and rebuild it and you know be creative with your builds, but it takes you a few hours to build most Lego sets, whereas collecting a Warhammer army and painting it to a good standard is is a thousand hour process or at least for me it probably is you know I have spent thousands of hours painting miniatures in my life I've probably spent far less building Lego right and I, I love Lego I think that's what's so attractive about it it's a, it's an absolute rabbit hole the amount of literature out there is you know it's it's massive you, you the universe is so well fleshed out and so thorough and and detailed over many years and that's not just from a law perspective although uh, law is part of it it's also from a kind of rules perspective army building perspective i used to spend hours reading these codexes and army books when i was younger and just looking at the pictures reading about everything building my army lists um but of course from a painting side as well i mean it's incredibly creative you can be a painter to a very high standard or you can just be a more casual painter and that's a journey that everyone will go on and i actually think the internet although there are many downsides to the internet the internet has really helped warhammer because it's kind of helped the shift from uh, written law uh, in a book or in many books to uh, online and you know there are some amazing law youtubers just such high quality productions uh, say luton or baltimore there are many others, um, and even I've had a crack at a little bit of law, uh, if you want to check that out on my channel. But it's really kind of, op the internet's really opened up this universe, which doesn't really exist on screen, which I think is another nice thing about it. Although I'm looking forward to Henry Cavill's adaptation at some point. Um, but but the internet has you know, so much law, too much almost. Y you're never going to be able to digest it all. But I think that's why it's so good. Um, you know, if you just go on the wiki, it's 7,000 articles. You, you ain't going to read 7,000 articles about, you know, events and characters and, and armies and battles. And some of these are very extensive. So it's a, it's a really good space to just nerd out and to just get really into, you know, parts of it. And then, you know, come in and out. You're not going to get bored, right? So for someone who's, you know, can get easily bored doing sort of normal things, I mean, Warhammer, you, it's not going to bore me. And as I said, when it comes to painting, I mean, you can really push the boundaries here. So, you know, if you're sort of a competitive person or you like to see progress, um, it's it's a really tangible way to be able to do that. And there's also a wealth of resources uh, when it comes to painting um, on the internet, from Games Workshop, from, you know, various other sources. Um, and you can really push this to, to a super high level. I mean, some of these are just stunning works of art and being able to replicate this is, is a serious, serious skill. And it's a skill that's actually become professional for many people. So that's just, just such a blank canvas in a way for 
space to move it's so well fleshed out that you can find your completely your own path and relationship with this as a hobby which i really like and creativity i think creativity away from a screen you know people sort of build stuff online and do art online and do you know various uh, creative sort of design jobs or whatever but uh, it's quite rare to have you know a modern form of creativity which exists separate to a computer screen and Warhammer really fills that niche. And I think from a modern world perspective, the fact it's doing so well, I think for a lot of people, it is a good escape from that online world. And it really gives you that sense of accomplishment, like finishing a project, you know, and th th this, you know, this can be no joke. Some of these projects are serious time investments, but some people need that. I, I need to have something I can put a huge amount of time and effort into because you only get real fulfillment and accomplishment from doing that. And that's why a lot of the kind of race to the bottom, dopamine hacking uh, ways to, to grab your attention and to, to waste your time nowadays, you never get this sense of fulfillment and achievement, which you can get from being a Warhammer fan, player, painter. Now, of course, there's a downside to this. I mean, as I said, it can be very expensive and some people do take it too far and addictions can be serious and you can be addicted to anything really and warhammer is very addictive but for me as long as i'm not <laughs> you know going bankrupt it's been a very healthy addiction the healthiest addiction i've ever had and it really does replace wasting my time on things i don't want to be wasting my time on. i think it's fair to say that in my life i've been generally happier when i've been in warhammer than when I sort of come away from it and been spending my time doing something else, particularly video gaming. You know, there's a huge social aspect to, to Warhammer as well, and, and a lot of this social aspect exists online. If you want that, then feel free to join my Discord. Very sociable, fun place to hang out and have chilled and interesting discussions, debates, and just share your work and your passion. But there's also, obviously, the real-life sort of gaming aspect to this, which is a huge part for a lot of people. For me, in recent years, this has sort of come out out of my life. But when I was younger, I used to spend hours around my friend's house gaming away. And uh, that will always uh, appeal to me, I think, as part of it. But that's the beauty of, beauty of this whole thing. You can just do it in your own way. Everyone hobbies in their own way. But it's a shared world. It's a shared experience and a really beautiful thing. Games Workshop themselves are a very good company, I think, on the whole. They really do, you know, keep up to date with a lot of things. So from a competitive side, they sort of keep the game as balanced as they can. They also update old models now. So, you know, nostalgia is a huge thing for a lot of people and, and many industries really put push on nostalgia buttons to, to market their products. But Games Workshop are quite good at keeping most ranges relatively up to date. Um, sometimes you have to wait a few years to get yours, but... Um, they've really been doing this very well recently um, with these characters, for example. And uh, they give you, I mean, modern sets are just, are just so high quality. I think unrivaled, to be honest. Um, you know, these, these sort of upgrade sprues and are just a good example of where Games Workshop has sort of taken their kits when it comes to customization and just, just quality. The quality just shows, speaks for itself, I think. These kits are gorgeous. The amount of hours of my life I've spent just staring at pictures of models and all my own models. It's, uh, it's kind of scary to think about, but I don't see it as wasted time. If you've never been to Warhammer World, I really recommend making a trip. It's a, it's a good day out. Obviously, if you don't live in the UK, it might be harder, but it really gives you a good insight of what this is all about um, and the kind of limits that you can push this to. I don't think Warhammer will ever not excite me. There's always something new to find out about, to get into almost too much in a way. Sometimes you have to sort of limit yourself to to a small space of it because it's it's so extensive. But I see it only growing. I think the future of Warhammer is really bright. I think the Amazon show with Henry Cavill will make Warhammer explode into a, a really mainstream thing. Um, and hopefully it's good, but even if it's not good, I just think it will put way more eyes 
onto this hobby into onto this world and i think a lot of people will get into it as i think the internet has been doing for the last five six years i think a lot of people have got into warhammer through the medium of the internet and even something like youtube so if i inspire you to do that then i'm happy days but there are some very good youtubers who i'm sure have done that for many people so this is kind of an ode to warhammer i don't think this is specific to warhammer in general i think a lot of these points are about tabletop wargaming in general but warhammer is the one for me and you know i love it i just love it and it's it's just such a big part of my life now especially with this youtube channel so i just wanted to share that thank you for listening um my i have a range of videos talking about many many things all warhammer related on my channel uh, as I mentioned, I have a Discord server. Please do join. And uh, I also have an Element Games affiliate link if you're in the UK and want to get some discount Warhammer. But don't spend too much money <laughs> if you can't afford it. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, a little bit of a different one for me. I'm, I'm trying to find my feet as a YouTuber, but I think I have a good plan, actually, of where I want to go. So I think what I would do is make a channel update, possibly even do a live stream in the next week. And then we'll kick on from there with a kind of new structure to how we're running the channel as we continue to grow. The growth has been awesome. The growth of my Discord server has been awesome as well. Um, keep it up. Keep, keep supporting. And uh, I'll catch you all very soon.